Eli was very playful and would run around playing with siblings and just did normal three-year-old, four-year-old things. And as a parent, you look at your child and you think, this is what we're gonna be doing, this is what you should be expecting from a four-year-old. He'll be going into preschool, but all in one day, one week, you know, one moment, your whole idea of what's next is redefined and unknown. When Eli was four, he had just fallen on his knees and started having a seizure, and they just started coming one right after the other. We went to Children's Emergency Room, and as one of the um, neuro tendings was walking into the room, he had an, an epileptic episode in front of her, and she said, yeah, yeah absolutely, we're gonna get you admitted, and that was scary. While they're still doing their diagnostics, while they're still trying to learn you know, what would be the appropriate medication to satisfy and quell those seizures. You feel very helpless. Everything's upended and, and everything is different. You don't know what your life's gonna look like. Eli has what we call focal cortical dysplasia on the right side of the brain. This is a disorganization of portion of the brain. So you have cells that's in the wrong place, that's not connecting correctly to their neighbors. So the seizure was originating in that portion of the brain. We went through some evaluation with some behavioral psychologists and they were really starting to look at the, the possibility of surgery and, and felt that with Eli's age and uh, the location of the lesion that he would be a, a solid candidate. So April 12th, 2018 is when Eli had his craniotomy. I remember it was pretty difficult. I had to relearn how to walk and all that. I remember after surgery, um, my dad was in. He, he would uh, play like matching games with me. And he would uh, he'd tell me to use your left hand. Whenever my dad did that, I could move my arm more. High five. <laughs> the hardest part of the entire journey is you don't know if you're going to get off the exit ramp. April 6, 2021, my husband passed away. He had put the kids to bed, everything seemed normal, and, and he had a, a massive heart attack. Death will change anybody's life. And losing a parent at that age, it isn't fair. But that's not our story. Our story is resiliency, and our story is hope. It built my faith to see just the overall peace that he had kind of going through it. And he's just an overcomer, you know? And um, five years behind us in seeing that we did get off the exit ramp. You know, he is seizure free still, and he is medicinally free. It feels like the biggest gift. Eli's life now, I would say, is as close to what his father and I would have expected to see for our 10-year-old son. He plays football. He, we are in the crux of uh, the start of, of wrestling season. He's got aspirations to start baseball in the spring. He's made the honor roll the last couple years. He mentors other children that have been impacted by loss. And uh, I would say that that is a result of the concentrated focus on getting Eli well. And that is the hope, the redundant theme of hope that comes through the doors of children's health care. This is where we want it to be. Thank God this is where we're sitting. I absolutely, absolutely believe he is a walking miracle.